Hi, I'm Domenica from Sunday Slays Cosplay, and today I'm going to show you how I made my Galadriel breastplate from the Rings of Power. So, let's get crafting. The quickest way for me to make a breastplate is to use my mannequin as a form and slow heat Warbla Pearly Art on top of it. However, I don't want the breastplate to be perfectly formed like a human, like my mannequin is, with abs and two separate booby cups. So I'm using cling wrap to smooth out all of the details and I'll shape the Warbla on top of that. If you don't have a mannequin, another way to make this base is the very same technique, but on yourself. Cut it apart until it lays flat and use the pieces as your pattern on your EVA foam. This is exactly what I did for the back of the breastplate. So this needs to be extended down here. Uh, this breastplate I cut out for a different cosplay and I haven't finished it, so I'm gonna start with this one as the base. When I made this costume, I only had this one promotional image to make the entirety of the costume. I didn't know what the back looked like. I didn't know what the legs looked like. I kind of guessed and just made up what I think all of the pieces that I can't see would look like. It wasn't until the day I literally finished that they came out with another trailer that had additional shots. So everything's made off of just this one image, uh, but I think I did a pretty good job by the end of it. You can see there I have some butcher paper on the bottom. As you'll see later on, I kept cutting this breastplate too short, so I kept having to patch it and add pieces to the bottom. This is what it looks like with my sketch, just on one side. I need to add the bottom here still. Um, but I'm gonna do a test on how these ridges might look like using foam clay. So we'll see. This isn't working. It's super lumpy and uneven. Uh, time for plan B. I'm cutting thin strips of high density foam and I'm gonna kind of bevel just this little edge here and then glue that on so I get a nice clean ridge all over. And then I'm gonna fill in the gaps with caulk. So my ridge would be nice and even kind of everywhere. Caulk is flexible, it doesn't crack and works really well for seams. This is the first time I'm really sculpting with it, but it seems to be working great, it's just going really slow. I have to wait for one layer to completely dry before adding another. Uh, but using water on my finger helps smooth it out. I used gloves after this first cock trial. It wasn't as nice because I couldn't feel the smoothness, but it's better to not have it on my skin.
I have so much patching to do because I just didn't cut my stuff right, so... I'm cutting this EVA foam here on a bevel and a curve so it curves away from my body. I'm getting rid of the excess warbler to make everything even and symmetrical. For my pauldrons, I'm starting with Kamui Cosplays pattern. I'll link her stuff in the description. These had to be adjusted to match Galadriel, so after making the first paper pattern, I made a second one on my own here, and I even cut them more later on. My secondary under pauldrons are just three layers of two millimeter foam cut to size and then just layered on top of each other. I'm adding puff paint uh, that adds just a little bit of depth to these ray details here. I also put a little piece of warbler on the inside of the pauldrons to help them keep their curved shape and not flatten out. You can see it on the inside there. I'm using barge contact cement to put together each of the pauldrons. Uh, I also use this to glue pretty much everything on this cosplay, um, except the smaller details, which I'm using super glue. I'm 3D modeling the star detail on the front of the breastplate. It's all primitive objects, just some stretched out pyramids and spheres. It was difficult to find a reference for this, but the promo poster here was the best close-up, and I think I have it similar enough. I'm using my resin printer so I can get as much small detail as possible. After the gluing the star on, I'm doing some seam cleanup and smoothing with, you guessed it, more caulk. I want this breastplate to look sharp and straight and the puff paint is a little too wobbly for me. So this is one millimeter foam cut in a super thin one millimeter strip to add some straight raised points that aren't as high as the other points. All of these are put on with super glue. I'm adding a separate neck piece made of foam, mostly to be more comfortable rather than having hard plastic on my neck. Also, just in case it gets trashed with me moving my head around, I could easily replace it without repairing the entire breastplate. I made two millimeter foam strips that go outwards that hold its place under the breastplate. I added high density foam strips to the back so my softer foam won't rip under the stress of the corset. I'm using a Dremel here to punch in holes. This is way too many holes, I only use half of them. Don't do this many holes, it takes forever to put on and off. 
I'm spraying with filler primer to fill in and smooth out any creases left on the breastplate from my sculpting. If your breastplate is all out of foam rather than warbler, you won't want to use this stuff. It cracks very easily when it's bent. My breastplate on the front here is pretty rigid, so I feel confident that it likely won't be an issue. Primed everything with Plasti Dip to have every piece have the same kind of surface for the paint. Plasti Dip is also flexible, so it won't crack on the back where I have to stretch it to get in and out. And ah, uh, it looks so good painted. This is Rust-Oleum Dark Steel. Every single tiny flaw shined out like a beacon with this flat metallic paint job, but don't worry, we'll fix that with a good paint job. I'm using my airbrush and spraying black into all the deep parts and shadows of the breastplate and it immediately looks a lot better. It took a lot of the flatness out and gave it a ton of depth. Then with a bright shining silver, I'm highlighting all of those straight edges. I'm really trying to bring focus to my clean work and using shadows to hide any flaws. The bottom here is the worst part of my sculpt and these sculpted transitions are super wobbly. I'm painting this line as straight as I can. I'm completely ignoring where the sculpt actually is and making an optical illusion that these are straight and transition smoothly into the bottom of the breastplate. Fake it until you make it. Before I painted the star gold and opal, I'm painting it black so the silver doesn't shine through the gold at all. All of my chainmail is resin printed. I had to alter the STL to make the ring seven millimeter and I had to support it myself, but I'll link the original creator of this chainmail in the description, it's really cool. All of the mail pieces are sewn together similar to real chain mail, but each link is snipped, fed through, and then using a drop of more resin, it's cured complete again. And you can't see the seam in this chain at all. It links together beautifully. And yes, it takes forever. This took a very long time. Then I sewed each of the sides of the chain onto nylon straps, and those straps are glued onto wherever I need them gonna attempt to show you how I put my pauldrons on. So they're put on with one strip of nylon this way and then each side is secured with another strip going with a T across. So those hold on. All of my chain mail is attached with the nylon just glued on underneath. This little strip with the buckle here is where my rear braces connect. There's more chain mail that's connected from the front to the back with this nylon strip here. That's just glued right along the edge from about here to here and the chain just falls over the pauldron like this. So my pauldrons are permanently attached. I put them on with the rear braces attached also, but I take it off, I unbuckle the rear braces to get myself out. The inside doesn't look very pretty because I had to patch it so many times, so there are a lot of layers and things going on, but the inside doesn't matter. I think it's pretty, I like it. So this neck piece is detachable. It just tucks right in and Velcro's in the back, um, much better than I'm attempting to do right now. It's laced up right down the back. I didn't show my side pieces, but they uh, Velcro right in. I have worn it twice already, a full day at San Diego Comic-Con and then another full day at Dragon Con. I packed this and my sister in battle in just two pieces of luggage for a plane. So it got a little bit crushed. Um, I'm not really worried about it. The Warbla held up 
fantastically. Obviously, it's Warbler. At the bottom here where it's foam and my seams, um, it's actually pretty strong there, but it moves. I do have some cracks. Everywhere else it got damaged, it doesn't really matter. The back got creases and seams, but I didn't even fill my seams in the first place. I didn't really care what the back looked like for this particular cosplay, but once it's all laced up, it does look really nice. And there you have it. This is how I built my Galadriel Rings of Power costume based off of one promotional image. I love it. I love being Galadriel. I love wearing it. I can move in it. I don't feel limited at all. I can go to the bathroom in it. Also, fun fact, I won the movie category at the Evening of Brie costume contest at Dragon Con, so that was very exciting. I got a signed map of Numenor from some Rings of Power people that were there, and it was just, oh my gosh, so much fun. So please like and subscribe for more videos like this one, and uh, see you next time. Oh